Hi and welcome to Spotlight video number eight. Right now there are two important developments going on in the league. The first one is the robot model inspections and the second one the continuous developments on the Webot simulator. There is not that much to talk about when it comes to the robot model inspections. The review phase is still ongoing. The deadline for reviewers to hand in their reviews is tonight. And then we will provide feedback to teams based on the teams that the peer reviews from the teams and the TC who have re reviewed the robot models by May 7th. So by Friday this week. In comparison to the robot model inspections, there's a lot of updates I can give you on the current development of the Webot simulator. So we are still in the phase of finalizing the auto referee. Just as a quick recap, this was supposed to be released as a final version last Monday. And as I said, we faced some delays because some implementation parts were more complex than we initially thought. So Cyberbotics has now released an updated version of the auto referee last Friday. Since then, we have already made significant improvements, especially when it comes to the asynchronous communication between the robot controllers and the simulator. And we have now taken the decision to always have the most recent stable version of the auto referee and the RoboCup world in our own fork on the Webots repository on the release branch. And this version now includes almost the entire rules of the game with still three main exceptions. The first one is ball holding. So the decision whether the ball is inside the convex hull of a player for an extended period of time. And we expect a release that includes this feature on May 10th. So next Monday, then forceful contact. So the decision if two players are colliding and if this is a foul or not, we expect this update to be released on May 14th. So by the end of next week. And then the third point is ball handling. So the decision if the robot touched the ball with the arm or the hand. And we expect this to be released by May 19th, which is Wednesday in two weeks. So again, there is another tiny delay in what we have originally promised last week. Again, because there is a lot of different things we need to take into consideration to actually ensure that this game controller and that this auto referee is running in a stable version together with the game controller and together with the robot models and the rest of the simulator. So this still required some updates. So this is the um, latest version of the schedule as we have right now and we are we are aware that this is going to be um, very tight for the teams when it comes to preparing for the mock competition this is why we are now doing this continuous releases and whenever we have a new update available we will make sure that we have a stable version and then push it to our stable um, release branch right away We've also in the process um, updated the roller, uh, robot controller API. Um, so that contains now also the system time in addition to the simulated time as was requested by teams from the league. If you are using the um, current version of the auto referee, if you're already testing your behavior with it and you notice any unexpected behavior, please um, open an issue in our fork of the WeBots repository. We are aware that there are still some issues with the current implementation, for example, with the inactive goalkeeper and the penalty shootouts. We are currently working on this and we will make an update, a more stable update and um, an update that passes more of our own extensive internal testing as soon as we have updates for this. In the process of updating or finalizing the auto referee, we also had to make some more update to the game controller. There are two important updates that are interesting to the teams when it comes to the communication between the robots and the game controller. The first one is that we have updated the message that is sent by the game controller via UDP 
to the robots, which is the current game state, basically, that is sent over the UDP network. We have made two additions when it comes to the player info. First of all, we are now sending the amount of warnings a player received. So there's not just yellow and red cards that were already part of the um, robot info that we were sending. We're now also sending the amount of warnings which are given by the referee. And the second addition is that we now included a flag that tells if the robot is the current goalkeeper or not. There can only be one goalkeeper at any time um, for one team that is playing. So each team has exactly one goalkeeper. By default, it's always robot number one that is the goalkeeper. But you can change this or what can request to become the goalkeeper and then the flag for this robot will be set to true in the robot info. How can a robot request to become a goalkeeper? This is the second change that we've made. So there is also the response data that the robots can send back to the game controller via UDP. The main thing this was used for up to now was the alive message. The alive message is used for the game controller to visualize whether the robots are connected or not. There are now two other message types that can be sent with this um, return message. The first one is that the robots can communicate, the current robot can communicate that it wants to become the goalkeeper. This can only be requested during a stoppage of the game. And if it is requested during a stoppage of the game, then the robot sending the message is becoming the goalkeeper. The second one is the update that if a team is currently in the process of preparing for a free kick or a throw in a corner kick, a goal kick or a penalty kick, so one of these game interruptions, if this was awarded to team A, then both team A and team B have a preparation time to sort of move in a good position for executing this. And if team A that received this free kick or corner kick or so on, if they are now ready to perform this action before the entire time in the preparation phase is over, so the 30 seconds are over, they can request for an early execution and they can also do this via this UDP message. Again, this can only be sent during a game interruption and this can be sent by any player from this team. So it doesn't matter which player sends this message. And it is only acceptable after 15 seconds have already elapsed. So the opposing team is guaranteed 15 seconds to move away from the ball. So as soon as 15 seconds and those preparation phase have elapsed, then robots from the team executing or wanting to execute the free kick, corner kick, throw in or so on, they can request an early execution by sending this message to the game controller. We've also documented this in the wiki, which I'll link in the description below. So make sure you check this out and make sure you adapt your um, robot behavior when it comes to this. As it also announced last week, we noticed that we still have a number of open issues that required clarification or small adjustments in the rulebook. Now that we are coming towards the end of the order of re-implementation, we have published a new version of the rules with these updates uh, last Friday and you find the most recent version now on the RoboCup Humanoid website. This was what has been going on over the last week. Now what is happening in the upcoming weeks. So the first deadline, as I said, is May 7th. This is a deadline for us to give feedback to the teams on their robot models. So you will uh, receive feedback on this via the submission system on Friday, May 7th. Then we have a couple of major updates planned for May 10th, so next Monday. Next Monday, we will release an updated version of the API specifications. So there is the API for the communication between the robot controllers and the robot models on the field and also the server infrastructure. So we are currently in the final stages of benchmarking on um, our different possibilities to host this competition. 
we will take a final decision um, this Thursday and then we will release the um, more well-defined specifications on um, what computation power teams have available by next Monday. As I said, we also have the next release of the order referee planned next Monday that will then include an implementation of the ball holding. And then also the sign up for the mock competition is going to start next Monday. The mock competition is in the beginning of June and is not just for us as organizers to test that the entire infrastructure is actually running, but also for US teams to actually have some practice games already um, against other teams, see if um, how well your uh, software is running on our infrastructure. So we will open the sign up for this um, next Monday and the participation in this is completely free of charge for all teams who are um, participating in the main tournament. On May 14th, that is the end of next week, we will release um, another uh, update for the order referee, which is then including the forceful contact implementation. And then the final release, as I said, is planned for May, May 19th. And that will be the um, implementation also contains ball handling. And then I can already say that on May 21st, that is then um, a Friday, the sign up for the mock competition ends. And then a week later, that will be May 28th, we will um, give you a preliminary schedule for the streaming and also when games will be played during the mock competition. So you have a week um, in advance, you will know about how exactly the mock competition is going to go, when you will have games and how and where those games will be streamed. This is all I had for this week and for the upcoming weeks. As always, you're welcome to come to our office hours and then ask us any questions or give us feedback. If you have anything, you can also always post in the forum or contact us on Discord. And then otherwise, I'll see you next week with a lot of updates on the specifications and also hopefully the next update of the auto referee. Um, see you then.